you will uh, turn to your uh, Word Among Us or your Living with Christ, let us begin today's Mass by saying the entrance antiphon. Turn to me and have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am alone and poor. See my lowliness and suffering and take all my sins, my God. Which Oh, they're doing the, uh, well, I'm going to change a little bit because why? Uh, I'm doing ordinary time. It's the option for Saturday. So uh, uh, for, uh, that's interesting that they do that. That's interesting. We'll correct it next week. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us. We humbly beseech you all that might harm us. And grant that all works uh, uh, that and grant all that works for our good through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. I, uh, beloved, I charge you in the presence of God and of uh, Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and all, and by his appearing and his kingly power, proclaim the word, be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convenience, uh, convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and, uh, and teaching, for the uh, time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but follow their own desires and in, uh, uh, in, insta, uh, insta, insta, in, in, What is that? Insatiable? Yeah, okay. It's, a, it's interesting how that's spelled. Uh, insatiable curiosity will accumulate uh, will uh, accumulate teachers and will stop listening to the truth and will be uh, uh, diverted uh, to myths. But you, by self, uh, be self possessed in all circumstances. Put up with uh, hardship. Perform the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry, for I am already being poured out like a libation, and uh, the time of my departure is at hand. I have uh, completed. Uh, I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just Judge, will. Uh, accord to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The word of the Lord. I will sing of your salvation. My mouth shall be filled with your praise, with your glory day by day. Cast me not from my, uh, my old age, as my strength fails, forsake me not. I will sing of your salvation, but I will always hope and praise you ever more and more. My mouth shall declare your justice day by day, your salvation. I will sing of your salvation. I will treat the mighty works of the Lord. O oh God, I will tell of your singular justice. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth and uh, till the present, I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will sing of your salvation. 
So I will give you things, uh, uh, thanks. I will give you thanks with uh, music on the lyre for your faithfulness, O oh my God. I will sing your praises with harp, O oh Holy One of Israel. I will sing of your salvation. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said, Beware of the scribes who like to go around with long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and, as pretext, recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a, 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 a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury, for they have all contributed from their surplus wealth. But she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, to give a little context of the Gospel, and then, of course, relate it to the uh, first letter today from uh, Timothy here, uh, second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Uh, 2,000 years ago in the Middle East, and it's kind of the tradition even today, but if a, a woman uh, was um, a widow, uh, more of a second-class citizen, and her husband did not uh, uh, contribute for her retirement, uh, then what would have to be done is that she'd have to go out and beg. She'd have to go outside and, and ask people to, in their charity to give to her. And as a result, uh, uh, she was living day-to-day. -day. Widows in this type of circumstances would literally live day-to-day. -day. They'd rely on only what could be given and gathered for that, that particular day. And so what Jesus is kind of uh, pointing out to the uh, disciples and pointing out today is how we have to respond to God. And what this widow does, and she, a good Jew, remember, uh, has come and, and uh, uh, to the treasury to give her, her, uh, uh, her uh, tithe. She still wants to give the tithe. How many people, when they're in a circumstance, um, put the church off as like third, fourth, or tenth down the row? But what we see in this uh, woman is her complete faith, complete trust, and also recognizing the due that belongs to God. And she gives everything she has, her literally her daily bread. She hands it all over to God, puts it in the treasury, and says to God, okay, God, I'm going to trust that that the people that are in the temple are not going to squander what literally is what is going to keep me alive. And Jesus responds. He says to the disciples, reminding them, be very careful. See see what, what people are willing to do to sacrifice in order to, to keep the temple going. And it's a, a good reminder of us as well. Two things. What we're supposed to be doing is, is giving everything to God, trusting in him. And uh, not to give from our surplus, but right from the very soul to, to say, no, this is what I have to be and have to do in giving myself to God. And that goes both by uh, uh, physically supporting the church, but also spiritually in our, own, in our own hearts and souls. And this is what St. Paul is reminding Timothy, a bishop. Now, remembering St. Paul realizes he, he's... Uh, most uh, likely going to die uh, uh, in Rome. And uh, this is going to be uh, his swan song. So he says to, to uh, Timothy, hey, you know, uh, remember, and he always uses the analogy to uh, the priests and the bishops, uh, uh, a sports analogy, kind of similar to what you hear a lot of priests do even today. And of course, he was always found it remarkable that, that people, especially athletes, what do they do in order to, to win the crown or win the, the uh, the, the trophy, 
uh, they go out and just run and exercise and prepare themselves to, to get uh, uh, ready for the race so that they could win a, you know, a little trophy, a, a nothing trophy. And uh, that's all they live for. They, they go for just that. And he, he reminds St. Uh, Timothy here, now remember, I, I've done just that, but my goal was not to be something that is of earthly making, but rather for heaven. I have completed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award me on that day, not only to me, but to all who long for his appearance. That's what we have to remind ourselves. And again, here we have St. Paul writing another bishop, saying to him, don't worry about when people say, oh, you shouldn't be preaching from the pulpit politics. No, no, no. When it comes to the truth, you've got to stand up for the truth, whatever it is, convenient or inconvenient. Because if you don't, Timothy, then when? When will the people be able to hear the truth? And that might mean politics, it might mean religion, it might mean how you use your money. But don't be afraid to teach the Christian message, to teach the people the way to heaven. So now let us join together in prayer recognizing as the widow that we come before God completely and totally giving ourselves entirely to him, not from our surplus, but, but from our, uh, our necessity. And we present to him now our petitions, our supplications, and our thanksgivings. So let us now stand and, and pray that God will hear us as we call out to him in his son's name as our mediator. Heavenly Father, we do pray for our world leaders, uh, especially during this pandemic, that they will always remember to see Jesus as the model, that they will be servants to the servants, and that they may serve the people that, that uh, they uh, have authority well and according to your will, we pray to the Lord. And as we see in today's gospel, yes, we also want to pray for uh, church leaders. We in particular pray for Pope Francis and Bishop uh, uh, Donald. We also remember Bishop Emeritus Paul Swain. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit with them to keep them close, especially during this uh, difficult time of the pandemic, that they will keep balance, but at the same time uh, guide us to the heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Now we also pray for ourselves, Heavenly Father, it's like the widow, that we too may, may trust in you. And that we have the faith necessary to, to be able to give up everything we have for your sake. Heavenly Father, we give you praise today for this moment to be at your altar, uh, to worship you according to your will, to worship you perfectly. Heavenly Father, help us to always appreciate the blessings that you give us in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Now, Heavenly Father, we ask you to remember our farmers and ranchers that the planting season is on top of us and some for some even beyond. As they are out in the fields working with the heavy equipment and with the animals, keep them safe by sending your angels to watch over them and protect them. For they literally feed the world by the work of their hands. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless them, that they may have a plentiful and successful harvest this year. We pray to the Lord. Now, Heavenly Father, we approach you and present you all those members of our uh, uh, parishes who find themselves ill or in distress because of this pandemic. We in particular remember Father Paul. Heavenly Father, bring your Holy Spirit upon these individuals as well, that they will have the courage to endure the cross they are carrying at this time. And yes, we pray for their quick recovery. We pray to the Lord. And if it be your will, Heavenly Father, we also remember to pray for all those who have died, that they will all share the promise of eternal life by your grace, that they share peace in the promise of Christ's resurrection in heaven. We pray to the Lord. And now we come before you, Heavenly Father, with our own individual prayers. We, in particular, remember my coward when we offer this Mass. And we present to you now those petitions that we hold dearest to our hearts from the silence of our hearts. For all of these, we pray to the Lord. God, our Father, again, it is with great appreciation that we have this time to be able to offer to you, taking the 
precious gift that you have given to us and return it to you in loving service and worship here at the Mass. We now turn to you in trust like the widow in today's gospel, asking to hear our prayers and make perfect what is imperfect in them. For indeed, they're presented to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, is one God forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word to whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Will and you will and gaining through a holy people, and he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the bond of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to that is worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our family, Donald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to co heirs of eternal life, and be praised and glorified through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said, Your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be saved. To you I call, for you will surely heed me, O God. Turn your ear to me, hear my words. And again, if you will, in your charity, do remember to pray for the attention of my coward when we offer this Mass.
Let us pray. Governed by your spirit, we pray, O Lord, those whom you feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you not just in word or in speech, but also in works and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.